In this next unit, we are going to be studying gases. And this uh, is a picture of a gas. And we can recall that gases always occupy the shape of the container. And gases are compressible, so their volume can change. We experience this when we sit on a balloon. Uh, so we can actually change uh, the volume of a gas for example, by pushing down on a piston like this. So if we, if we did this, if we pushed, if this was a piston and we push this down so that the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven moles of a gas that were in this container could be compressed and so the volume could change by the application of pressure. And since a gas is in constant motion, these gas molecules are flying around at approximately a thousand miles per hour at normal room temperature. When a gas hits the side of a container, that's exactly what causes uh, the pressure. We are under atmospheric pressure. So we live, uh, here's sea level, here's the mountains. So the higher up in elevation we go, the less gas particles there are. But if we, we don't have to be in a container to feel the pressure. So the air exerts a pressure on us. So when we're, uh, air molecules are also constantly in motion and you've experienced a pressure change if you've ever driven up the mountains and your ears feel funny or flown in an airplane. So to talk about a gas, we're going to look at three concepts. And one of those concepts is a volume change. That would be a big container and now all the gas is in a smaller container. Or we could talk about a pressure change when you air up your tire your tire has to have a certain amount of pressure in that and so we're just adding more gas to the tire and um, so tire pressure might be something that we're familiar with. Atmospheric pressure is what causes us to have a funny feeling in our ears and we're also going to talk about gas in terms of temperature differences. And just to look at the difference between a gas and a liquid, if we have a, a liquid would look, the particles are going to be close together but not in any fixed position. So if something's in the liquid state, these particles are free to flow past each other and but they're still close together so the particles themselves are close together. If we look at a solid, then the difference between a liquid and a solid is the orderly arrangement of the particles. So in, the, in a solid, the particles themselves are not free to move with respect to each other. So we can think about this in terms of water, liquid water. It pours out or it flows. A piece of ice, which would be solid water, that whole entire chunk would fall out of a glass of water and again, these particles are not free to move. So if we heat up a solid, if we add heat, a solid can turn to a liquid. And then if we add more heat, we can turn a liquid into a gas. So when we measure out uh, a liquid or a solid, we can just weigh it on the balance. The way to measure a gas is not by putting it on a scale and weighing it, but the way we measure how much gas we have is talking about the pressure, volume, or temperature. Okay. I'm going to talk for just a few minutes about units of pressure because that may be something that we're not really uh, familiar with. So units of pressure, the one that we might be familiar with is what we abbreviate as PSI, which is pounds per square inch. Okay, that's what we 
when we look at a pressure gauge, this is generally what we are in when we fill up a tire with air. So for example, my tire holds 35 PSI. Okay. That's not the pressure unit that we're going to be using in this chapter. We are going to be using a unit called an atmosphere or an ATM. So an atmosphere is just a made up unit and it's actually just a, a made up word. Okay, and we call sea level pressure is just defined as one atmosphere. Okay. So we'll be talking about pressure in terms of atmospheres. This is really the maximum uh, pressure. This would be the maximum atmospheric pressure if we were just outside. Where we live at approximately, so if we go back and look at our diagram here, at sea level the pressure would equal on average one atmosphere. The higher we go uh, in elevation the less air there is above us pushing down on us and so the pressure decreases as we go up. So we live at about 5,500 feet elevation and here the pressure is approximately 0.8 atmospheres. If you're on uh, K2, those mountains that are 27,000 feet high, the pressure there is approximately 0.2 atmospheres. So if you're an extreme mountain climber and you're climbing uh, the mountains in Afghanistan, you're going to need to wear oxygen because the pressure is so low. If you're flying in an airplane, uh, then the cabin has to be pressurized. So one of the things that we are going to look at when we talk about how much gas we have is how much gas we have and we're going to talk about that in terms of pressure. Another pressure reading is a barometer and the barometer reading is uh, sounds like a length measurement but we're going to abbreviate it as MMHG that means millimeters of mercury and mercury is the metal that has this symbol and this is the reading uh, if you take someone's blood pressure that unit is in millimeters of mercury and so this is a barometric reading so a barometer reading so if we take a barometer to sea level the barometer is kind of like a thermometer but it's got mercury in it and the mercury responds to atmospheric pressure if we take the barometer to sea level the mercury level is going to rise about 760 millimeters and this is the same as 76 centimeters or 29.29 inches so the local oil and gas industry here they are very concerned about the pressure of the gas and the pipelines they generally use inches of mercury but our textbook is going to use millimeters of mercury so these two units are equal to each other and we'll, we don't really need a discussion on volume and temperature but if we can measure the pressure and the volume and temperature of a gas then we can talk about uh, properties of a gas or how much gas we have.